What's up everybody, welcome back to the intro, my name's AJ Gels, how y'all doing? We are back with the Man of Medan. Um, I'm not sure how much more we have left in this game. I, I, I've seen a few other YouTubers already finish up their Let's Plays for it in about eight or so parts. You know, I'm not sure if my, my parts have been longer or shorter than theirs. But from what I can tell, this game really isn't that super long, so I, I think we should be able to finish this up in another, at least, uh, I, I think we should be able to finish this game up. Uh, by at least uh, part ten, uh, but either way, uh, let's actually talk about what we what we saw in the last video. We saw a, a lot of scares. Everything starting to really hit the fan, uh, you know, with uh, with Conrad being chased by that weird, creepy zombie lady and whatever Brad was going through. There was a lot of spooks with him, but I'm trying to remember exactly what we uh, what we saw. Um, yeah, uh, Fliss had that whole thing in that ballroom, and Alex and Julia, there we go, I don't know why I couldn't remember her name, uh, ran into weird, bizarro Alex, and sadly, Alex got killed. No, I'm not really sad about that, but uh, yeah, we, we lost our first member, so we're down to four. Let's uh, see if we can keep everyone else alive. Well, like I was saying, though, I mean, we've kind of seen everything start hitting the fan, uh, all the the weird stuff is really starting to um, to really kind of amp up. My my theory is they're hallucinations based um, on some sort of gas or some sort of chemical agent released by um, the, the Manchurian gold. At least that's my theory. What the hell is wrong with you back there? What? Brad, you lost your shit, like, big time. You almost killed me. What? What are you talking? Come on, no. no. Oh, right, right. He ran from Fliss because he you know, saw something. It's the only way we can explain all this evil shit that's happening really? down there. Really? Cursed? Really? Right, come on, I'm the only one that gets to hyperbolize around here. There's got to be another explanation. Right? The stuff I saw, it's like there were these old soldiers. They were bodies. They were dead. But then they came alive and... I saw something. This, right, uh, Fliss saw zombies. I mean, she was batshit crazy and like dinosaur old. Not that that's a bad thing, but she just like up and vanished on me. Alex wasn't the only Alex. There were things walking around with his face on them. Alex's face, it, it was horrifying. Let's time out, okay? This place is too fucked up to just be fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like something is going on here. So what do we know for sure that we can all agree on? Did you see the gold? Anything? Manchurian gold isn't actually gold. It's a fucking chemical and it's leaking all over cargo hold too. Yet yeah, you think it's I'm pretty sure this isn't a curse. What our friendly fishermen are expecting either. <sighs> this should go over well. What do you think actually happened to this place? A goddamn mystery box is what it is. I saw 1947 on the newspaper. This whole place reeks of weird. Dirty, stinky, weird. And I don't like it. It's like this place is stuck in a perpetual bad feeling machine. I'm not gonna ask, is this a ghost ship? What happened to everybody on this ship? Where did they all go? I feel like we're on real houseboats or the river sticks. So what's with the bodies? They come with the ship? Apparently getting scared to death is an actual thing because I'm pretty sure that's what happened to these guys. At least we figured some stuff out. Kind of. We're wasting time. Whatever we do, we have to do it now. Pretty sure we can hop back onto the Duke from here. Fliss said we'd need the distributor cap. Let's try the radio. God, Conrad, the Duke's radio got smashed up in the storm. Please, just stop joking around. I hear you, okay? But I'm thinking that tower means there must be another radio around here. Right? Yeah. Good chance we could use the power that keeps coming on, too. <sighs> There's gotta be a way up there. The luck's not that bad, right? Don't answer that. I'm, I'm just really hoping I don't hear the words, Hey, let's split up. Because you know what always happens whenever somebody says, hey, let's split up. Eh, people die. 
It's in every cliche horror movie ever. There's got to be some way off this bucket of bones. <laughs> no shit. I think we're, uh, speaking clinically, totally effed. I wonder if this ship has anything to do with the plane from the dive. I mean, there are AA shells, and we're looking for, uh... We found a plane that had the actual you know, bullet in it, so it wouldn't surprise me. Sadly, no, but I'll keep my eyes open. Hey, help me out over here. Uh, it ain't exactly the grand concourse, but it'll do. You want to give me a leg up? Yeah, as he, he puts his hands, that have to have accumulated a whole shitload of tetanus into her hands. Yeah, that's safe. I can't remember. Does Fliss have shoes? I don't think she does. I'm serious. It just I don't, uh, it bothers me. You're not telling me he cut his foot once he stepped on one like sharp object or yeah. Same with Brad. Brad was doing a lot of running around. Well, so hell, so was Conrad. I think both of them should have at least one or two cuts on their feet, which again, or that they would have stubbed their toe or brushed against something and gotten some sort of tetanus. Just saying, it bothers me. This is. This is where I chased Conrad before. Huh. I, I thought it looked familiar. You know, also kind of touching on that whole cursed thing. Because, I mean, clearly the old lady that was. Come over here. That was chasing Conrad was Fliss. Or at least for part of the time it was Fliss. Because by the end, you know, when we either had to choose to jump or confront whatever was chasing us, it turned out it was Fliss. So how, again, there just, there are a few things here that make me ask the question. And she knew the Manchurian Gold was a chemical agent. She, you know, saw Conrad freaking out and not recognize her. Same thing happened with Brad. Why? Is it that they uh, are are thinking that this is something um, supernatural? When I mean the idea that oh, it's a chemical agent, we're down here breathing it in, would lead you to believe that it is. Uh, you know, would lead you to believe that it's uh, uh, in, in a um, hallucinogenic. No, but there's got to be a radio on this ship. There, there has to be. Something's wrong here. If you were headed to San Francisco, you'd be crazy to take this route. Maybe they were laying low. Like hide and seek out in the ocean? They're 
blown off course, bad cloud cover. I guess they couldn't figure out where they ended up. Hear a radio. And they're acting like, oh, well, we couldn't find one. And again, I mean, like, you're not listening and say, hey, it's over this way. Oh, sick, man. I think Mushhead over here was trying to get a message out when he shuffled off the buffalo. Sounds like they were pretty well fucked. I die. Hey, look. Holy moly, this radio is still kicking. Well, radio science hasn't changed much in 70 years, as long as there's power. I got this, folks. Hell yeah! This sucker's alive. It's a number station. Military bandwidth. The military's got to be able to help us, right? Hello? Hello? Check, check, check. Anybody? I, I, I got to check this bearing. Okay, I first found the captain's hat with the name ending in G and the Medan after it. Okay, so because we found that, that's a clue of the name of the ship. And uh, the group discovered a radio made contact with the military. Okay. Fuck yeah, man. Okay. Uh... Hey. Hey, if you can hear me, we're on this, like, uh, it's a huge fucking old ass ship. Our coordinates are uh, 12 degrees, 30 minutes south, 151 degrees, 20 minutes west. Made it. Made it! How do you remember all that? Like, like, how do you, how do you remember your coordinates? Jesus! Hey, ah, uh, fuck. Okay, we're on this. Uh, it's an old freighter. It's like huge and abandoned. Hello, can anybody hear me? Is there anybody out there? Fuck, shit, fuck, fuck. <laughs> can you hear me? Oh. oh. Come on, this is bullshit. Again, I gotta I gotta see this. Oh, it looks like Fliss really likes us. Alright, the bearings. Okay, so our coordinates got out there. Hey, come here, look! This has got to lead somewhere. Maybe we can find a way to get the power back. If the power's back, we could send a message over the radio. I think someone should wait here in case a message comes. Ah, damn it. I gotta be honest. I don't think I'm gonna make it down there in my shape. Fuck it. I'll go. I'm coming too. If Julia says she can handle it, she can handle it. Okay, Julia. It's you and I. I wouldn't feel like that uh, bit of dialogue there got, and I gotta check these bearings again. Brand Julia, okay. Um, anyone feel like there was a, like, there should have been, like, there should have been a piece of dialogue there, but wasn't, you know, like, when, when Fliss said, well, she said she can handle it, she can handle it, like, I, I feel like there should have been, like, maybe if, if Alex was alive, there would have been a line right before that, that would have made, that make a lot more sense. Broken bones. Everything still work? You guys okay down there? We're okay. So, what's next? We're gonna have to find the generator. If we can get it started, we can power up the radio. Copy that. We'll wait up here by the radio. Here. Yeah. 
Hey. After you. Guessing these are the lower levels of the ship. Did I already look at that? Yes, I did. Okay. Sorry if you didn't notice. There was a there was a cut there. It's uh, it's early. People are getting up. My mom was getting up. Uh, she's going to work. So I thought I'd uh, you know, get up and say goodbye. So there's more shit. Some sort of altercation. Ten days on the brig. Wow. Must have really blown his lid to get that kind of time. You'd think these documents would have the name of the ship. Well, at least there, that answered my question. It was even relatively minor, observed to trigger significant hallucinations. Men, highly convincing, subjects seeing and hearing things that really were not there even. Which yet makes me ask the question, how did Alex die? Like, who, who smashed his head against that window? Because if they're not real, or, you know, they're hallucinations... Enjoy this. What the hell are you talking about? In any other circumstance, you know, this place would be the coolest place to explore, like, like ever. I'm gonna say no, not at all. Says the girl who couldn't wait to dive a wreck. Shut up. Well, and also, Brad supposedly researched all about this uh, this wreck and everything. Well, no, I guess he researched the plane, not the. Never mind. I'll take that back. I guess he must have researched the plane. He never researched. Although, again. If he researched the plane, then he would have had to know about the rescue mission in the ship, I guess. But maybe not? I mean, they, they just they kind of just loosely touch on the, the reasoning of how they found the, uh, the plane wreck. But again, you'd think they'd know something about, hey, that... You know, something about this ship even existed, but I'm not sure. Um I mean, there, there are just some some weird logical things that just kind of make me ask, wait a minute, how exactly did this this work? Um, you know, or you know, or wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. X should have. Uh, again, it's it's like I said that characters have certain pieces of knowledge that should um, they don't explain something or something. It's like I said, how to hallucination bash Alex's head against the that uh, that. Glass, or did Alex do that technically to himself? You know, did did what, did Alex literally just take his own head and smash it into that glass while Julia was having a hallucination? Though it also makes you ask the question: If it's hallucinations, how are they having the same hallucination? Looks like the engine room. Good place to find the generator, right? The ladder's broken off here. I think I can just... Wait! Are you okay? Yeah, uh, all good. 
Just come down. Well, can't you see that fog? You're you're gonna start seeing hallucinations. Just just warning you. What's up? That it it, 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 it was. Wait, wait, did you see it? Um, hello. Okay, so I so I'm seeing things, but you're not. Okay, so follow my thinking here. We know this ship was carrying the Manchurian gold, but that was really some sort of hallucinogenic bioweapon developed in China during World War II, and we know that it was super unstable and leaked all over the ship. So maybe it's still here. Maybe it hasn't dispersed after 70 years, and it's having the same effect on us, you know? Paranoid hallucinations. All this crazy shit we're seeing, none of it's real. The crew was hallucinating. We know they were scared of something, and the officers thought it was just a bunch of jumpy GIs trying to get out of guard duty. This isn't a ghost ship, it's a floating bioweapon. This couldn't have anything to do with the plane wreck we dived. Okay, so the plane was a search and rescue. It came out here because the people on this ship sent a distress signal, we know that. But I guess at that point, the fog had done its damage, and for whatever reason, they shot the plane down. I mean, who knows what the hell they were thinking, or thought they saw. Oh, God. All right, let's get going. But again, nobody's going to ask how Alex's head got smashed into that glass. I mean, it's it's one of those that I think it's got to be that sort of horror movie look. You kind of have to, it kind of like how they see the same hallucinations when they're together. It's one of those, eh, okay, you need to just kind of suspend some level of logic and just accept it. But seriously, though, it, I just, I, I think for some of the shit to make sense, Alex would have had to have been scared to death, not head smashed into the wall. Yeah. Right now. Dry clothes? Yeah. It's one of those, I understand what I think I should be doing. Like I said, suspending disbelief. But at the same time, it there, there are just a few things that do make it a little hard. It's like, eh, come on. Somebody noticed something that should be fairly obvious to notice. Or is this whole Manchurian gold thing going to be a complete fake out? And the uh, the monsters are going to be real in the end. Oh. Look at this. The rebreather. The fisherman must have brought it over from the Duke of Milan. You think it still works? Looks like it's got a little juice left. Maybe a couple of minutes. Should we bring it with us? I mean, it's heavy. It's just going to slow us down. Are you crazy? Half the ship is submerged. Could be a lifesaver. Okay, I gotta see what bearing I just mess with. Oh, the rebreather. Uh, junior. Oh, okay. Oh, Danny's still alive. Really? I thought he died. No. Stop, please. No. You know, I might have to go back and watch what Alex was wearing, or what the, the, the zombie Alex or whatever was wearing at that time. But I think that, okay. I think I figured out how Alex's head could have been smashed into the, you know, could have been smashed into the, into the glass like that. And that's, they were hallucinating that Olsen had Alex's face, and you know, that, 
It would have made sense because Olsen was following them at the time. Okay, there we go. I think I answered my own question. Ah, fuck me. Jesus Christ, two times I've just completely screwed myself on a rhythm puzzle. Not a puzzle, but you know, like a little rhythm mini game. There's no use hiding, you little foot. What's the problem with sharing all that gold, eh? There must be plenty of that to go around, more than enough. And we're all in this together, right? Trying to cut me out of the deed? <laughs> Have all the gold, and I'm to be left here to die. But I am the captain. I am in control, and I am the one that says who goes and who stays. Ah. Boom! Got him. He's breathing down our necks. Please tell me you have an escape plan. Can't risk moving it. Just need to watch and wait for an opening. Ah, the smug Americans have smashed their way into a foreign land. And <laughs> oh, fuck me sideways. Hey! Okay, you know, that's a. <sighs> they lost it when Olsen was. Jeez. You know, oh, God, somebody's gonna get. Why is Julia carrying the rebreather and also why Oh never mind, she's not carrying it anymore. Okay. Oh, they lost it. They lost the rebreather. Okay. Lock it! Oh my god, lock it! Oh. Oh. Are we safe? Please tell me we're safe. Oh. Yeah, totally. I mean these doors were meant to withstand all sorts of stuff. You don't see that, like, yellow fog? Why can't we breathe the mist? What does it do? It's life. Bringing things to life that shouldn't be alive. It's inside now. Inside with us now. Please just calm down. Stop. Stop. It's in one of us, isn't it? Put the gun down, now. Why would you say that? Why are you telling me what to do? Yeah, you breathed in the mist. It's happening. I can feel it. Okay, all, all right, look. I, there was, you know, something back there. Uh, maybe a mist or a fog, maybe? I knew it. I told you. Did you breathe it in? No, look, we held our breath. We did not breathe any of that stuff. <laughs> oh, really? I know you're all fancy divers, but you expect me to buy that? 
We've been down here for hours. You've been holding your breath this whole time. You're holding your breath right now. Oh, God. It's in me. I got the mist in me, don't I? It's in me, isn't it? That's right. Feel the rhythm. I can feel it swirling around in there. It's changing me. The beat is inside you, man. Feel the rhythm. It's a really bad joke. <laughs> I don't know what that's. No, no, I, I, I can't see it. You're all right, man. There's no mist. Stop! Stop lying! You can all see it in me, can't you? You're all just lying. The mist is inside. I was think that flashlight looked like it was floating just in that that's ah, fine and the whole thing with junior I guess that ends with him blowing his brain out oh, God. Oh, okay I thought everything was about to convince junior that the mist must be inside himself all right Here, grab the gun. There you go. Is it empty? If it... Can you at least say if it's empty or not? Because otherwise you just dropped a perfectly good gun. Just start drowning ourselves in puddles now. Why not? There's 472 rivets in this room, which can only mean one thing. I've been in here way too long. Hey, is anyone hurt down there? I gotta go after him, don't I? We gotta go make sure everyone's okay. Shit! Well, what's our play? You're gonna stay here with the radio. I'll go after them. Split up even more. Idea. Fantastic. I'm a big boy. This is my mess, and I'll clean it up. Just keep your head down, okay? <laughs> Like I said, splitting up. Great fucking plan. <sighs> you know, though I was uh, I was saying earlier though, I, I guess the how Alex died, it was Olsen who probably killed him. They were just hallucinating Olsen's fate. <gasps> nope, 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 nope. They were hallucinating Alex's face onto Olsen's body. That's. That's gotta be what. What happened there? I mean, because otherwise it makes no, it, it makes no sense. What was that premonition? Uh, okay, it's not real. It's not real. Calm down. 
What was I saying? Otherwise, it makes no sense how Alex died like that. Again, you'd think that would have the ship's name on it. Okay, okay. God damn. How the hell big is this place? <sighs> Shouldn't he be running into them by now? He asks questioningly. Heard Olsen. Really? Why'd you go see him? Can't just kill my friend and call it quits, you piece of shit. <laughs> okay, so yeah, okay, so yeah, Olsen killed Alex. Okay, okay. There we go. I have my answer to that question at least. I got. I got to see what the um, bulkhead floating the cargo bay. Fantastic plan. I didn't I didn't get killed by missing one one QTE. Come on, come on. Come on, Conrad, get the hell out of there. Awesome.
Really? Did, we, you, did you need to do a one-liner? I don't mind it, but still. Let's... And bearing is the the the, 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 the distributor cap, because I can't speak. And able to, uh, to retrieve the distributor cap from Olsen after a struggle in cargo hold. Okay. So the cap's fine. Is his hand going to move? No? Okay, we're just gonna see his dead body. Alright, whatever. Where's Brad? Okay, so you just got back. All right, let's try it. So, I, so I'm assuming we escaped. We're good? We're done? Alright. I guess game over. Game over, man. Game over. I thought he was right behind me. I could have sworn he was. I, I thought if I... If I just turned around... I could help him. But if I hadn't stopped, then... Alex would have gone through the door and he wouldn't have grabbed him. And he wouldn't have... <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I saw it. Right through the porthole. It's fine. He didn't have any personality anyways. He was my big brother. He was everything I ever wanted to be, you know. I just wanted to be able to tell him I'm sorry. But now I'll never get that chance. He's fucking dead. Good God, Alex. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Alex. Okay, those two bits of dialogue side by side really didn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. I think they were trying to emulate what they did in Until Dawn with, um... They were trying to emulate what they did in Until Dawn with the, the surviving members kind of like being questioned by the police and having them talk and try and give their stories. But just having... It wasn't like there was a real conversation between Julia and Brad. It was just kind of a... Dialogue. Eh. Um, alright, well, there we go, guys. There was the man of Medan. Um, I'm... I, I gotta say, I actually... I, I, re I really enjoyed it. Um, you gonna talk to us? That's it. Game over. You're done. For now, at least. You could always try again. See if you can't do better next time around. Impressive. Almost everyone survived. Almost. I suppose when the curtain falls, you're either ready for it or you're not. It's all about decisions, isn't it? Decisions made in a hurry, in a panic, made with the heart instead of the head, or vice versa. Sometimes those decisions take a long time to have repercussions. 
But there are repercussions. There are always repercussions. Till we meet again, maybe in Little Hope, maybe somewhere else. But be certain, we will meet again. It's inevitable. Okay, that line about Little Hope has to be a, a, some sort of some sort of reference to whatever the next uh, Dark Anthology is going to be, which I think is actually going to come out sometime next year i don't want to, i think i want to say early next year but i'm not sure that's 100 percent accurate um as far as my just kind of like post game review just what's running through my head i actually enjoyed this game i'd say eight out of ten similar score to what i gave um until dawn uh i, I can understand where you'd say well i mean that was really short and was I, I think these are meant to be like little mini stories i mean this was a 30 dollar game and for what we got, thirty dollars, I think it was. I think it was worth it. Um, I didn't really mind the characters. I actually liked them. I just feel like if this game was longer, they could have expanded on them a little bit more. It's not that they were unemotional or that they were un. It's not that the characters were bad. It's just, or even two dimensional. It's just it feels like. In, in really, I feel like the story just did this too. At some point, it just it, you know we got on the boat and just left. It just kind of stopped. I feel like there should have, like, there probably was more story to tell. They could have drawn out the concept. They could have drawn out the length. I, I, I don't know. It just, it, to me, it just kind of felt like it ended abruptly. You know, like, oh, we just, we have the distributed cap. Okay, we're just, we're gone. Okay. It, it, you, you get what I'm saying? It just kind of felt like it just was, boom, it's over. Um... In a way, this is kind of like an escape room. It's kind of a... There's multiple ways to get out. It, be it through the radio, be it through the distributor cap like I found. I bet there's a few other ways to get out. Um, but yeah, it just... I see. I feel like it just kind of ended abruptly. I feel like the characters didn't really get enough time to shine because the game was so short. Uh, I Like I said, I think that there were... Eh, there weren't... There were a few logical things. Again, like the whole how Alex died, I guess, makes sense to me now because again once i saw what uh olsen was wearing i'm like oh okay olsen they they projected alex's face on olsen and then olsen smashed his head but, you know like the fact that like i said why are they seeing the same hallucinations if they're hallucinations how come it took them it, it, it seemed like uh fliss had figured out that it was um a hallucinogenic but at the same time was saying it was the ship is cursed it, it's like i said there are just there are some things i'm like Okay, there, there's some weird logical things, but for the most part, there weren't that many. I thought the scares were great. Um, I mean, it really did a great job of kind of giving you that claustrophobic horror. So those jump scares really did feel like they came out of nowhere. They were well done. They played tricks with your eyes of kind of that, whoa, did I, did I see did I see that right? Did I, you know, was there a person in that corner? Was it, you know, it, sometimes they were just, they were blasting in your face jump scares. Kind of like when, uh, in this one where Conrad went through that door and boom, there was that face in his face. But uh, there are other moments where it's really a lot, um, it was a lot more subtle. So I have to give them credit for that. All, all in all, I, I did I did enjoy this game uh, for $30. It's, it, I think it's worth, it's worth the price for $30. Um, especially with all of the, uh, again, the different ways that you can play the characters, that you can play things. Um, I just, again, I just feel like because of the length, some things just kind of got, I don't want to say got left to the wayside. But things just didn't have a fully full chance to develop, like the characters, uh, the idea of the the relationships, because we spent so little time with the entire group as a whole. I don't think we got to see those relationships really affect anything. It was just kind of how they were responding to each other in certain dialogue. Not, I think, the overall whether they trusted each other or not. It just it's like in it's like I said. I feel like some of the ideas work better in a longer full feature game, like Until Dawn. Um, as opposed to a short kind of little vignette, kind of like this one. I guess calling this a vignette isn't technically correct. An anthology. There we go. I guess the, I'll use their term for it. Um, but yeah, as a whole, I, I, I'm just kind of rambling here. As a whole, I did enjoy this game. Like I said, I'd say 8 out of 10. Oh. Oh, yeah, I forgot about him.
but yeah, as a as a whole, I I really did uh, did enjoy this game. Eight out of ten is my score. Uh, tell me what you guys thought uh, watching it. So out of nowhere, this thing just sent out an SOS. Guess we got a real life ghost ship here. Whoa, what the hell is this? about right. I just saw someone in the woods. Whoever it was, they're gone. Going to okay, very good. Who's there? I fashioned her with my own hand. to Little Hope. I, love it. I like how they put a little little uh, little uh, trailer in there for the next one. Uh, no, uh, sorry. I, like I was saying, 8 out of 10 is my score. Tell me what you guys thought. Um, as a whole, like I said, good game. Um, I guess that'll about do it, guys. Uh, social media, that is Facebook, Twitter, the website, minds.com. Links, all that stuff is down in the description below. Uh, always stay tuned. I'm always starting new projects and all that. You know, I have, think I have, a, I have a really bad habit of starting more projects than I think I can really finish. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'm trying, damn it. Because um, speaking of which, uh, I think it's tomorrow, actually. Uh, if you're watching this the day it's uploaded, we are starting Greedfall and Gears of War 5. I'm excited for both of those games for very different reasons. Um, Gears 5 is just a series, or Gears is just in a series so near and dear to me as a, as a gamer that I'm really excited for it, and Greedfall has just been really grabbing me, giving me that, that Bioware feel um, that I really like and I'm, I'm really excited for. So, uh, that those two games are starting tomorrow. We do the weekly show. That's every Sunday, or at least I try every Sunday. Um, again, if you're watching this the week of its release, of this video's release, um, we might not be doing one exactly because I will be doing stuff for um, Tokyo Game Show, but again, that's beside the point. That's um, either way. The regular schedule is on Sundays. Uh, other than that, stay tuned. I'm actually planning on doing like a like a real like video review of this. Um, it's kind of I'm trying to do a new sort of review structure as opposed to writing. Um, it'll be you know like scripted and clipped and you know me talking over footage and whatnot. Um, that I've taken, so hopefully it'll be interesting, hopefully it won't be just a complete and utter dumpster fire, but uh, keep an eye out for that, I will try to have that up uh, by the end of next week, it's just finding, again, finding time to edit it, and I want to get myself, I don't I don't want to try and put myself on an impossible timeline uh, to have everything edited, but that's my uh, that's my plan at least, so either way, thanks for watching everybody, uh, for the last time in the Man of the Don, my name's AJ Gels, this is the Umthar Gaming Channel, I'm out.